Hello everybody, my name is Emma. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you and yours are doing well. Today, like the title says, we are going to be doing the reading order for every single Penelope Douglas book. A lot of people are asking about past books and how to read them because of the new series. Who does it connect with? Who does it not connect with? I'm gonna answer all those questions. Now, while I own many of these books, I'm gonna use pictures on the screen. It's gonna be much easier to kind of go through them because for some books, some series, there's several reading orders um, depending on your preferences. So we're gonna jump right into it. Don't forget to subscribe and that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a video. Like and comment if there's anything interesting throughout. It really helps my channel and let's jump right into it. So first, we're gonna start with the books that are complete and other standalones. They connect to no other book, no other storyline, no other region. And as of now, Penelope has you know announced no sort of continuation for these storylines. So first up, we have Birthday Girl, which is my favorite book, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I already, I already okay, we're not gonna talk about my favorites. I'm just gonna explain the book. So first we have Birthday Girl. This is an ex-boyfriend's dad, you know, taboo relationship. But if I can explain this book in any way, it would be that this is a love story. This is about two people who love each other so strongly and are just like told by society that they can be together because of their history and their age. But like these people love each other. This, it's, it's just a love story and I loved it. And it's a five on five. It's one of my favorite books of all time. And it is probably my favorite book from Penn. We're not gonna talk about that, like I said, never mind. <laughs> Next up, we have She Six Venom. This is an FF bully high school romance. I also gave this five stars. This is really, really, really good. I will say, They've done a lot of bully romances off recently. They're kind of known for it. The thing with Tristix Venom is that it felt very personal more than the other books. And I know that's crazy to say because if you've read Corrupt, you know what Michael does to Rika. And yet there's something about the way that Clay and Olivia would attack each other. I don't know if it was because girls and girls know how to get under each other's skin, whether it be with a friend or your significant other. But there was just something about it that for some people it didn't register, it was like too much for me. It was amazing, I loved it. I loved seeing Olivia kind of come to terms with her sexuality and you know her being rude about it. You see those stories with men all the time. It was nice to see a female kind of struggle and take it out on someone else. Not nice, but like it followed that classic male, you know, aggressive uh, coming to terms with your sexuality and I liked seeing a female represented that way. I loved Clay who was just so into her body, she knew her sexuality, she was not afraid of it, but she just happened to love the one girl who just wasn't okay with the fact that she was, you know, a lesbian and, or I think one of them was bi actually. Uh, I just loved it. I really, really loved it. Like I said, this doesn't connect with anything else. I will say it is my hope that Penn does books for all of Clay's brothers because I really was attached and, and I'm interested in all of them, but they have repeated continuously that they are not doing any more series. Um, so I don't know that I'm going to get my wish, but I, we're crossing our fingers. Now, every other book that I will be talking about is interconnected somehow with a storyline, with a plot somewhere. So we're going to start off with the completed finish. They are not touching it again. They've repeated it continuously that it is done. That is the Devil's Night series plus Punk 57. Now, Punk 57 is in and of itself a standalone, but it does connect with the Devil's Night series. And these characters do appear later on in the Devil's Night series. So I would say read it in conjunction with the Devil's Night series. So there are three reading orders depending on when you want to read Punk 57. One reading order would be to start with Punk 57, then read the entirety of the Devil's Night series, which goes Corrupt, Hideaway, Kill Switch, Conclave, Nightfall, and then Fire Knight. Or what you can do is read the entire Devil's Night series, then read Punk 57. Or what you can do is read it chronologically in the storyline, which is that Punk 57 takes place after Hideaway. So you would read Corrupt, Hideaway, Punk 57, Kill Switch, then Conclave, then Fire Knight, uh, then uh, Nightfall, then Fire Knight. Personally, I read Punk 57 before I read the Devil's Night series, I think, or I read it after Corrupt, but like not knowing that it connected with the Devil's Night series. So if I were to recommend one, I would say do it chronologically. I'm someone who really, really likes to read things chronologically if they're meant to be read that way. And there's a reason why it's written at the time that it's written to make it make sense when Ren and Misha come into the story later. So quickly to explain Puffy 7, this is a pen pals gone wrong situation in that they didn't know who the other was until he finds out who she is. He goes to her school, kind of gets in a relationship with her without her knowing that he's her pen pal. And then it's kind of all the shit that goes down. I will say I haven't read this book in a really long time, so I don't remember. I think it had some bully moments in it. I don't know. Honestly, like I said, I read it a really long time ago. I'm not super familiar with it. I don't remember much of it. I will be rereading it hopefully at some point this year. And then we are going to go in the somewhat more complicated, but I'm going to try to keep it simple, the Fallaway universe. So initially you have the Fallaway series, which is composed of four or five books. Then you have a bunch of other standalones that are going to all blend together to create the Hellbent series. Um, honestly, I don't know how I'm going to show this on the screen to make it very, to make it easy to understand. 
But similar to the Devil's Night world, there are several ways that you can read like the Fallaway universe. The first would be to read both standalones and then read the Fallaway series, which would be Bully until you rival Falling Away and then Next to Flame. Or the other option would be just to switch it to read the Fallaway series and then the standalones. And the standalones, you can read them in whatever order. These three components, these three components don't interconnect initially. The way that they're going to interconnect is that all the characters that we see throughout these six or seven books are going to reappear in the Hellbent series, which is the series that's currently being published by Penelope Douglas. Hopefully that made sense. So essentially the order is only important, is only significant for the Fallaway series. Obviously you want to read it in the order that it was published. Bully and Toyu, like I said, rival, yada, yada, yada. The, the standalones, you read them whenever you want. Whereas Pop 57 with the Devil's Night series, the characters ended up appearing towards the end of Devil's Night, which is why you need to read Pop 57 before a certain book. Whereas these, they only interconnect in the next series. And then as for the next series, at the moment, there's only one that's out, The Fall Boys. There's going to be six books in this series. And basically it is going to be a blend of the children from all the books I just mentioned before. So quickly to give a kind of synopsis for each, um, Miss Contact is basically a ex-tennis player who becomes a teacher and she gets involved with one of her students parents. Credence is a very taboo book about a girl whose parents dies and she goes away to her step uncle's cabin who has two sons and she basically ends up enjoying all three of them if you get what I'm putting down. <laughs> Bully which is Jared and Tate's story it's the original bully romance of Penn. I'm pretty sure it's the original bully romance just ever. Until You is the same story from Jared's POV. Rival is a step siblings romance between Maddox and Fallon. Falling Away is the brother to Jared um, and it's his relationship with a girl who is one year older than him. Uh, that's where I'm at in the series currently. And then Next to Flame is basically, if I'm not mistaken, is a, it's composed of three novellas. It's Jared and Tate again, then two other novellas that I'm not really sure what they're about. I haven't read them yet. So that's everything. Hopefully I made things clear. I know that it can get a little confusing. Penelope Douglas is an author that I've been reading for a very long time. They are an author that I absolutely adore. They are an author that I will always stand by. I will always love. I will always buy. I will always support. And I know that right now, I've gotten a lot of DMs of people a little daunted of the reading order and what's happening what is it connected, what's not connected, so hopefully this kind of clears some questions up. If you have any other questions and I made things more confusing, leave them in the comments below, I will try and answer, I will try and clarify some things. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like and comment. All my other social media will be linked down below, follow me, let's have a conversation somewhere else. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time, bye!